welcome to the NBA Free Views and Discussion, Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I have seen many of the movies. My bottom is still asleep. Ah, did you watch it at the LMO? Indeed I did, and I remember, because I remember the LMO. Ah, they had good food, I hear. They, they actually, they really do. So it's a nice treat. Yeah. And also joining us today is Totera. Time to get out your popcorns, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to talk about movies. Yay. Did you watch in a really fancy theater? Uh, I watched Endgame in a really fancy theater. Yay. <laughs> like, come on, it's a three-hour movie. I got to get myself comfortable. Oh, true that. Did any of you guys watch the, I won't say remake, but the re-edit version of Endgame where they added a few scenes near the end? No, no, I uh, I, I saw all that I could have wanted to see. I'll catch the rest on Blu-ray or what have you. Uh, all right, then. All right, then. So anyway, in today's episode review, well, would you count this as a review or discussion, Silva? I'd say more a discussion. All right. In this episode discussion, we are going to talk about the movies of 2019 that we watch. So... We've decided to pick five of the movies, uh, be that good or bad, but mostly interesting. So we have a range of movies all over the place. But I'm just going to state out what movies I've watched for last year. And this is, I'm thinking in release order, and that is Elita Battle Angel, How to Train Your Dragon, the third one, Captain Marvel, the Lego Movie 2, Shazam, Avengers Endgame, Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, John Wick 3, Spider-Man Far From Home, Joker, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, Charlie's Angel 2019, Frozen 2, Jumanji The Next Level, Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker, and Spice in Disguise. Those were my movies. Um, actually, there's one more, Agent Ali. That one is a local movie, and I can't seem to find it here, and I'm not sure if you guys seen it. So, why talk about a movie that nobody saw? Anywho, uh, Silva, what movies have you saw for last year? Well, quite a few, so uh, this is in no chronological or, or uh, preference mm-hmm. order. It's just as I could remember all the titles. So I saw Queen, Avengers Endgame, Knives Out, Us, Glass... Toy Story 4, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man Far From Home, The Lion King, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, How to Train Your Dragon, The The Hidden World, Zombieland Double Tap, Shazam, The Lego Movie, The Second Part, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, The Missing Link, Hobbs and Shaw, Batman Hush, and... Well, yeah, that last one was a home rental. (laughs) But... It was still an interesting take. All right, then. Oh, uh, if you're talking about home rentals, then I watched Steven Universe, the movie. It was okay. Tara, what about you? Well, my list ain't that big. But if you must know, I saw Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 4, The Lion King, Captain Marvel, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Aladdin, How to Train Your Dragon, Hidden World, and I saw it once, I should see it again, but Detective Pikachu. Yay! I- I'm noticing that some of our movies are overlapping, and the one I notice is uh, How to Train Your Dragon and Avengers. Uh, other than that, there's not much that we overlaps, which is interesting. Different circles, different friends, different opportunities to see movies. True that, true that. But anywho, um, so I've picked out five and this is no in, in no particular order. Like, uh, it's not great or bad. Like, I find this five movie interesting, and that could be good or bad. So I'm gonna start off first, if you don't mind. And for me, it was Alita: Battle Angel. So a bit of a synopsis here, or a bit of a backstory. Alita: Battle Angel is a anime slash manga inspired movie usually when you have that kind of what's it call this history in your movie it's going to be bad uh, example is ghost in the shell that was not great 
uh, what else that was turned into a, an anime to a live action movie American made um, we had Dragon Ball Evolution that movie was terrible <laughs> but for this one the trailers came out and people were moaning about how the movie was terrible because the main character Alita's eyes were strange oh my god her eyes were so weird what's up with the eyes blah 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 eyes and somehow after watching the movie it kind of works the long and short of it is that uh, the main character Alita here is a quote-unquote cyborg where she lost her memory and her body is well kind of rare and powerful so how do i want to synopsize this let's just say that this was a very interesting movie for the fact that it was entertaining and it kind of works as a what you call this live action i won't say remake but live action movie and the problem with elita itself is that the story is not finished and the movie itself is well ends on a i won't say cliffhanger but it ends on a uh sequel bait the cinematography was great the action scene is great too and i say that this movie is worth a rental or watch on any of the outlets that's out there netflix probably yeah. but other than that it's kind of a uh, cool movie it's okay any questions that you guys want to ask have i forget if you said you had seen the anime or not no i haven't i heard of it but i haven't mm, so there's there's no chance to compare and contrast yeah true but from what i heard from fans especially angry joe he was okay with it well i uh i guess i don't have any real questions about it okay well, well i like it it's a fun watch like you should check it out if you can for me, I don't really have any questions, but I guess I can state why I didn't see this movie. Not because like I was busy or anything like that. It's just like, when I saw the trailers, and I just see you know all these normal people in like a fantasy world, and I see this girl Alita, just with the big anime eyes, is like, whoa, okay, what? <laughs> yeah, that that's kind of a turn off for some people, but actually, it kind of works. It separates her from the rest, and. The world itself is kind of full of quote unquote body horrors because some people are kind of cyborgs or humans with augmented body parts and it kind of works. It kind of works in the vein of the movie. So I'd say if you have the chance to watch it, go ahead. It's a fun watch. And I'm going to pass the torch to Silver. What's your movie, man? What's your first movie? Queen. Despite being named for the, the band, it's really uh, a story of Freddie Mercury, but heavily, heavily dramatized, which I know is kind of funny as Freddie Mercury was quite eccentric himself. But basically, it was an interesting take on the life of this band. Then you learn a lot of the history behind it and how basically they amped a lot of things up. So they misrepresented a lot of the history and the, the, and the people. I was like, wow. It was a really enjoyable movie, but now I feel a little lied about. And I'm like, hmm, what does this say about Hollywood when even our real lives aren't enough to entertain? But everyone put it in a great performance, especially the, the person who played uh, Freddie Mercury. And, uh, and then, of course, they get to show off all these great uh, Queen concerts and how some of these songs came about. I, again, because they so heavily dramatized it, I don't know how much is true. But We Will Rock You, they present as uh, the band wanted the audience to be involved in a song. So they, that's why they came up with the stomp, stomp, clap. And then I thought, oh, I hope that's I hope that's true because that was very clever. What about Bohemian Rhapsody? Oh, well, they, they talk... <laughs> that one was funny because... Uh, the band guy, I think he was played by Mike Myers. Oh, really? No. The music manager who they who turns them down, he never actually existed. 
Oh. But he's meant to be sort of this amalgam of several uh, production companies that refused because Bohemian Rhapsody was so long. I mean, it is a, an exceptionally long piece. And that's where that great joke, oh, I feel sorry for your wife if, she, if you think seven minutes is an eternity. Mm. It's like, wow. It's just the story of an eccentric, exceptional group, but it does play on all the, the tropes, maybe cliches, of a band story. They're eccentrics. They get together. They're innovative. The fame goes to their head. The fame tears them apart. There's a come back together uh, apology, and then they reunite for a great uh, concert and are so great, but then there's tragedy at the end as one of them dies that's not a spoiler i mean if you know history you know freddie mercury is no longer with us oh, true, no, which is sad mm-hmm. but i guess it's it's like really well acted but you start to see the man behind the curtain and so it's a give and take fun in the moment but afterwards you're like ah i feel like they weren't totally up front with me hmm. so basically uh, the fact that th- things are over dramatized kind of turns you off to some of it to some of it glad i saw it but really don't need to see it again mm, all right how was the music because it is a quote-unquote musical right well it's queen so they play queen queen is really good <laughs> all right then all right then and moving on to tara what about you what's your first pick all right well i think my first pick will be a movie that I really didn't like through 2019, and it kind of irks me. But my first, The first movie I'm going to talk about is the live-action version of Aladdin. Really, now? Yes. Now, obviously, you know, I'm not really going to spoil anything because I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the original animated version. But the thing, the reason why I... I mean, it's decent. Not saying it's terrible. I mean, okay, it kind of is terrible. <laughs> but... Just, there are just some parts that irk me. Like, okay, first I'm going to talk about the actors. Okay, Will Smith, I mean, he's not Robin Williams. No one can't replace Robin Williams. Sadly, he's gone. Mm-hmm. But he does a good job. There are some moments which question me about why they make Genie. Like, they try to make Will Smith almost like Robin Williams. But at the same time, for those who didn't grow up with Robin Williams, like, pretty sure this generation, they'll be like, okay, you know, that's fine. And I'm, I'm fine with that. But the person who's playing as Jafar, he doesn't really have a lot of emotion. He's just monotone, and he, he it's either he's serious or he's angry. Like, even when he's trying to be like evil or he's happy, something like that, you don't see him being happy. He's just monotone and serious, and it's, it's not like you can even tell. Like, if you just listen to the audio and you hear his voice, you can't really tell if he's angry, if he's serious, or if he's happy. He just keeps one tone, and that's it. And then... Throughout Aladdin, they, talk, they get. They, I guess they run into uh, like just talking about. It's getting me flustered. <laughs> they they have like this little side plot where it's like the Sultan's talking to Jafar about invading this other country called Shiraba, and they talk about it once, and then the movie continues, and they talk about it twice, and then they continue, and then after that, they just it's just gone. They just stop talking about it. It's like why bring it up? Why talk about invading this place in the first place? But, you know, like, that's the thing. That's the thing. I get, like, why? And then the whole... I, I do like some parts they added, though. Like, the one part... There's one part of the movie where Jasmine's like, um... To Aladdin, so where's Agrabah? And then they pull out a map, and Aladdin's like, "Hey, Genie, put a map of Agrabah, put Agrabah somewhere on the map." <laughs> and then they didn't ad- address that in the a- original anime version. Like, okay, you know, at least they're addressing some plots that we missed, like even how Aladdin got his f- first wish for free. But other than that, there's even some parts that they took away. Like, even at the final fight with Aladdin facing Jafar, he doesn't really face Jafar. He faces... Like, he doesn't even turn into a giant snake. It's just the giant... Iago didn't do a giant bird, and why? <laughs> but again, it's it's decent. Not good, but not that bad either. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound like you have issues with this. I do. Like, there's some parts that irk me, and there are some parts that are okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I can't really say much. Silver, do you watch this? I did not watch it. I watched a review of it, and uh, that, I felt like that was as close as I needed to get. Mm-hmm. Disney and their, their live-action reboots, uh, I, th- it, there's nothing new, new enough to make it unique. It, like you say, it's great that they added uh, 
little bits and pieces, but nothing in the grand structure changes. And it's like, Disney, come on. We're looking for innovation, not retreads. Hmm. I guess. I mean, didn't we have this discussion before? I, yeah, I pers- yeah, we did. We we had this discussion before. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was frustrating back then and to now. <laughs> well, the frustration continues. Congratulations. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Not to mention that there's more coming soon with what? Snow White? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, Lady and the Tramp was out. Uh, that was on Disney+. Plus. I have not seen it. I, I have. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say for now. <laughs> Alrighty then. I mean, it's it's very much the same with Aladdin. It's decent. There are some parts that bug me and some parts that are okay. What happened to the Siamese cats? Well, they're not they Siamese. <laughs> Oh, Actually, I should have added that to my list. <laughs> uh, I, I think we could copy paste that with Aladdin. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's true. Because, like I said, with Aladdin, same with Lady and Tramp, it's decent. I mean, like you said with the Siamese cats, they're not Siamese anymore. But another thing, too, is that they completely changed the song. So instead of that catchy Siamese song in the original anime version, they changed it to, like, a more jazzy like theme and it's so forgettable that i don't even remember how the song goes <laughs> <laughs> all right you know all right you know. so anywho um, as for my second pick i'm gonna say shazam so this movie th- this movie is how to put it uh, it is a comic book movie from dc uh, shazam or previously known as captain marvel is one of dc's superhero if you've seen or if you read Captain Marvel or Shazam, he is kind of a Boy Scout, even more than Superman is. And in this movie here, Billy Baxton is a kid bouncing from, uh, what you would call this, foster home to foster home just to look for his mom. Uh, somehow he got adopted by one family and... He, well, lives with them for a bit. His end game here is to look for his mom that he lost when he was young. Somehow, uh, the wizard named Shazam thinks that he is worthy to hold the power. And somehow he inherits the power. And this is not like any regular superhero movie origins. And I love it. It starts out with him being surprised that he gets powers and got no idea how to use them. Slowly, he and his adoptive brother finds or trains to see what he can do. And one of the first few things he do is stops a convenience store mugging and goes by his beer. Like, <laughs> it's one of those cliches where kid turns into adult goes by his beer like mm, yes <laughs> and the discovery of how he gets stuff is really interesting and what else uh silver you watch this right oh yes so what's your take on this oh i had so much fun with this movie it was well after dc has been trying so hard to be dark and gritty and to be super serious the superheroes are serious business here's a guy it's kind of funny uh shazam is more a kid than Billy Batson. <laughs> I mean, Bi- Billy just, uh, you know, he's acting all serious and broody. And then Shazam, he transforms to Shazam, and suddenly he's he's smiling, he's happy, he's kind of giddy with the power. Yeah, and, uh, like, he discovered he has electrical power, so he just charges phones for free and explodes them. And his, his friend, sidekick, brother... Just like, dude, you're lighting him on fire. What the <laughs> hey? Uh, yeah, yeah. But like any other, um, what you would call this origin story, the power gets into his head, and he gets overconfident and stuff. Suddenly, uh, the bad guy, Black Adam, was it? No, right? No, that was not Black Adam. That was uh, Doctor Zhivago. No. 
What was the doctor's name? I'm not sure. Something, something, something dark side. But there's one scene in this one, like... Savannah. Uh, there's one scene in this movie that I I say that makes it for me. And that's the typical uh, 10 feet away from you talk, talk, where I say something dramatic and you respond in kind. But in this one, they portray it as real life, where... I can't hear what you're saying, dude. What are you even saying? Hello? <laughs> Hi? Can you speak up? Yeah. It sells it for me, man. Like, that there shows you what kind of movie that they want to make. It is a quote unquote fun and lighthearted, light, quote unquote lighthearted movie where you just have fun, man. Like, just have fun. Anything to add, Silver? Just that. Well, I, I appreciate the tease at the end. So I know Shazam 2 is in the works, I believe. And it, it was... I will say that the Seven Deadly Sins really didn't have much menace to them or presence. They're just big, scary-looking things. If, if you want uh, the Seven Deadly Sins as, as characters as well as antagonists, I guess go play Darksiders 3. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, according to the wiki here, uh, a sequel is set to release on April 1st, 2022. Okay. Well, there we go. Got a little bit of time. All right. True, true. And Silva, what is your second pick? Well, let's let's just say that we're all going to have something to say about this because it is Avengers Endgame. Ah, yes. I've seen that movie. Who hasn't? Good question. I believe that I believe it's more noticeable who hasn't seen than who has, because yeah, everybody was waiting for this ever since last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched the uh, Screen Rant pitch meetings. No, no. Oh, the kind of joke of producers talking with the script editor. So uh, you remember how everyone died? Oh, I forgot. Really? No, <laughs> it's all I've been able to think about since April. <laughs> I miss Peter Parker. So everyone's gathering just to see how this goes. And I don't know if three words that have had as much impact as five years later. Wow. Yeah. You're just like, oh, man, really? You see this world unfold and it was so unexpected. I mean, usually be like, oh, okay, the villain got what he wanted, but we can undo it. But five years have passed. Tony's a father. Uh, people have moved on accepted some are are still struggling trying to cope basically the the world and time have moved on enough that you can't just hit zero without losing something and i love the 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 dynamic that tony's like look i want to bring everyone back but i don't want to reset time i don't want to lose my daughter and i was i just thought that was a, a brilliant twist and added a whole new dimension to the conflict and then, sure, it, it, the the time heists are, in some ways, nostalgia or callback to all these Marvel movies we've seen and enjoyed. I don't know if I've ever seen so many parts in a in a story come together, but I, I just love seeing it. And then, of course, there's the grand final battle where there were parts that were a little hokey, like all the the heroines of the cinematic universe gathered together for a fight. Okay, I. Respect that you all want to do that, but it seemed too forced. Mm-hmm. It's like, you sure you don't want to get a couple more fighters in just to keep the odds in your favor? No, we're good. Okay, Captain Marvel, are you going to fix everything? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, actually, <laughs> I guess this kind of this kind of entwines with Captain Marvel, the movie. <laughs> for someone who is, who is like the penultimate movie for this story, she really didn't do a lot. She really didn't make an impression, and she really was too strong and too uh, flawless a combatant for her own good. I've heard a few things about Captain Marvel. Like, uh, they were waiting on Captain Marvel, the movie, to see how fans react to the character. And since it didn't garner much positivity, they kind of downplay her in Endgame. That's what I heard. Well, it, then I hope if they do another Captain Marvel, they'll give her more personality and more time to really interact with us. Not just simply say, oh, she's been through so much. How much? Stuff. <laughs> Some guys were mean to her. 
<laughs> it feels like when they started making Captain Marvel, they were they they wanted their own Wonder Woman, and by that I mean uh, when Wonder Woman was uh, out, they were flowing with girls uh, stating that oh uh, how this movie inspired them, uh, blah blah blah, girl power and so on, and Go Gardo was kind of an inspiration and so on. That's what I heard, and Marvel wanted that piece of the pie, so quote unquote they made Captain Marvel. Well, unfortunately, Cap- Captain Marvel can't match Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman was a lot of things. She was idealistic, she was driven, she was competitive, but she was also naive. And so a big part of that movie is seeing her, one, stand up and and be there for others as an inspiration. Captain Marvel will fly in and blow up the enemy fleet for you. Wonder Woman will stand with you on the battlefield, take the brunt of the fight, but but she'll encourage you to charge the enemy lines. I mean, that's what happens when she stepped onto No Man's Land. True that. And that was the best scene in the movie. Yeah, that, that was awesome, man. Like, uh, goosebumps. Th- that scene was awesome. And why are we talking about Wonder Woman? <laughs> I think we're talking about people are trying to, to seize upon the female role model. And I think they make a big mistake. In fact, I'm gonna, I can bring in Rise of Skywalker. Oh, yeah, true that. A hero regardless of gender, inspires others. What Wonder Woman did was inspire everyone. They weren't trying to make her exclusive. And in a weird way, that's what makes her so appealing uh, and a good inspiration for young women, is that you don't exclude the other party just to make yourself look good. Uh, Ray in Star Wars and Captain Marvel excluded, and that didn't work. I think because people detect that there's an agenda rather than a story. Wonder Woman was a really good story. But we're talking about Avengers Endgame, mm, yes. True, true. And it, too, was a really good story. But with Avengers Endgame, there's the caveat of 25 movies prior to it to set up the story. But it was all those movies were character-driven. Okay, some didn't work out as strong as we'd hoped. <laughs> Thor, The Dark World is probably the weakest of all the entries. Yeah, and Hulk. I'm pretty sure a lot but of people he, try to forget that. <laughs> but then he bounces back with Guardian with uh, Ragnarok. True, 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 true. And, I mean, because you feel like you've been on a journey with these characters, it hits a lot when you see how they've reacted over the past five years. I mean, Thor, uh, letting his, when I saw his uh, new body physique, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Wow, I think I could hear every person who crushed on him just let out a little gasp of, ah! <laughs> And every cosplayer is like, yes! But then there's that great scene where the hammer returns to him and he look, he's like, I'm still worthy! <laughs> could you just imagine what the real Thor's doing back then? <laughs> the real Thor's like, wait, where'd my hammer go? Actually, I also really liked the discussion around Thor and post-traumatic stress and dealing with it. The only line I didn't like is when Rhodey uh, makes a, a crack at his expense. You know, what, what what do you think is flowing in my veins? Cheese whiz? <laughs> Rhodey! <laughs> don't be a jerk! But I loved Endgame. It was so satisfying. Yeah, true that, true that. I mean, the movie itself is filled to the brim with... Uh, nicks and crannies from previous movies, callbacks and whatnot. And is it a spoiler if we talk about what happened to Cap? Honestly, I, at this point, it's not really much of a spoiler. I mean, if you haven't seen Endgame at this point, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yes, what, what? go, go, it's out on Blu-ray. Watch, behold, finish the story. <laughs> yeah. I even remember, too, that they have the... um. Marvel Avengers Endgame they posted saying no spoilers for a week or so and then once the the curtain was raised being like hey now we can spoil it they literally uploaded clips basically spoiling stuff from the plot it's like okay yeah at this point you have to see it <laughs> oh boy but okay if that's the case I'll just see it like uh, when Cap's there suddenly holding out his hand pump he gets Mew Mew and Thor just says yes I knew it and then later, no, 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 you, you get the small one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But w- w- one of the few things I heard behind the scenes is that when people ask the Russo brothers about that scene specifically in, um, what, Avengers Age of Ultron, when Cap was lift- trying to lift uh, Mew Mew, 
and he got to move it a bit. They say that, okay, uh, back then, he could have lifted it. But Cap says, uh, Cap just didn't want to embarrass or didn't want to... I didn't think about embarrass, like make Thor lose face on it. So he just pretended he couldn't lift it. I don't think so. I feel like that seems like a, a justification. I'd more readily accept the idea that he was still feeling out of touch with the world. He wasn't fully centered. So there was the hint of what he could become. But by the by Avengers Endgame, he's taken over uh, the, the Sam's role as sort of counseling people through their grief. He's been tested time and again and is still committed to his ideals and to carrying on the fight. Uh, I think that those five years tempered him to where he can fully wield the hammer. So I guess I'll disagree. <laughs> death of the author, in this case, death of the directors. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say that, no, he needed a little bit more refinement between Ultron and Endgame uh, to reach that point. All right, then, all right. Then. And Tara, what do you think, man? Like, uh, I say my piece. Well, I mean, can't really say much. Just the Avengers Endgame is a, one of my opinions. One of, eh, I can't even talk. Hmm. <laughs> I really enjoyed Endgame. And you, for watching all the other Marvel movies, I mean, you'd have to watch all the Marvel movies to pretty much understand. Because I like how they address the whole time uh, heist thing. And I love how they travel to, I mean, obviously it's different places in their eyes. But to our eyes, it's different movies. How they're in the first Avengers movies. And then how they went to Guardians of the Galaxy and basically traveling all over the places. And while the ending is sad, but it's also heartwarming and some moments will make you cry. In the end, it was a very enjoyable movie. And I love, I even remember watching this in theaters. I loved how everyone's reaction was, especially that one part where every single hero is getting ready for battle. And then once Cap, once Cap America shouted the famous words, Avengers Assemble, everyone in the movie theater started cheering and clapping for the heroes, basically going like, Woo! Like, yeah, go heroes! And you know like that the that everyone's been growing up with all of these Marvel movies leading up to this movie because they want to see how things will turn out in the end. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like we we are invested in that movie. Like what, almost a decade or so. Oh yeah, it's amazing what what all started with I am Iron Man. Yeah, and it all ended with I am Iron Man. Oh yeah, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. So anywho, um, Tara, what is your uh, what is it second pick? My second pick. I'm going to have to go with Toy Story 4 on this one. Mm, I have not watched it. Uh, it's on my to-watch list. So I am practically out of it. Silver, you watched it, right? I did. All right. You guys have the floor. Well, in my opinion, I mean, it is nice, but I don't really think it was necessary. I mean, they could have easily ended it with Toy Story 3, how Andy went to college, and that's it. It could have been done. This, I mean, like I said, it wasn't really that necessary. It's basically like a remake of Toy Story 1, except now instead of Buzz being the new toy and understanding what he is, instead it's now Forky who's understanding what he is. Like Instead of Buzz thinking he's a real space ranger, Forky th thinks he's just trash. And he, it's just like the first movie, like I said, where Woody's trying to tell Buzz he's a toy and this is your kid. Same with this movie, how Woody's telling Forky that Bonnie is her, his kid. And like, honestly, it's the same thing. I mean, I love, I like the twist, how they added Bo because you haven't seen her in the third movie. It's like, hey, what happened to Bo? Where was she? And at the beginning, they address like a little flashback on what happened to her. And then they finally meet each other again. There's a couple moments that I question, like, why would you add a scary-looking doll in a, a movie for kids? Like, why? I mean, it's, they even have jump scares for that thing. That, that'll give kids nightmares. <laughs> Forky said the same thing. <laughs> but I do like how, in the end, the I, I mean, like I said, they did end on a good note, but it wasn't necessary. It was basically a remade story of Toy Story 1 with a few things swapped around and a few lines here and there. But in the in general, to me at least, it's the same thing. Just Forky trying to understand he's a toy, not a trash. Same with the first one, how Buzz is not trying to understand he's a toy, not a space ranger. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, I don't know if I could add up with this. I agree that Toy Story 3 was a great conclusion that if we ended it there, that was just fine. That was perfect. But this one, 
it kind of says that even when you get your happy ending doesn't mean things will be happy forever. Because for a good part of this, Woody is just lost. He's not the preferred toy. He's He says, I don't remember it being this hard to help raise a kid to be there for them. And mostly because the kid keeps rejecting him. And so, in truth, what really is unnecessary, sadly, is Buzz. Uh, this is not Buzz's story. Buzz does not have a role in this, really. So when they keep trying to uh, to introduce him or to get him involved, you're like, guys, just let it go. I'm sorry, Buzz is not relevant to this. This is Woody's story. And funny enough, it, it sort of transitions. Forky becomes irrelevant halfway through. It transitions again. So it's funny that really it's several stories rolled into one movie, all of them focusing around Woody. And so I had fun watching it. I thought it was really well done. I thought they had a, a sympathetic antagonist, which is not always easy to pull off. As, as sort of a way to say goodbye to the Woody Buzz dynamic, for all we know, there'll be another Toy Story down the line. And this time, Buzz will be the, the lead character. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, Disney at this point, I don't know if they even understand the concept of an ending. Well, they did Endgame. <laughs> and yet, the, but then they also did Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, yeah, that's to signify the start of a new era. No? <laughs> Until they lose the rights to Spider-Man and everyone's like, no! Uh, no, we, we need to know more about what the F! <laughs> All right, you then. But actually, not, now that you bring that up, it did get, not Spider-Man, but the whole thing about Buzz, you actually make a good point. And it's kind of sad how they, how they, uh, how he is in this movie because back then he's smart and he's a good leader. Like when they're trying to find Woody and stuff like that. Here, it's it's kind of him trying to be more comedic and it's kind of he's kind of more like a not saying he's a complete idiot, but he's kind of a bit stupid at times. <laughs> All right, though so I. I did love Key and Peele's uh, stuffed animal toy dynamic and uh, <laughs> their plans to get the old lady. Oh, yes. That I had a good laugh at. What are we talking about cameos? What about Keanu Reeves? Oh, yes. Uh, the Canadian stuntman. He was funny. <laughs> oh, man. Heard a lot of things. Like, that, that came out of left field for me. Like, what? He played a toy? Okay. More reason to watch. You haven't seen you haven't seen it, right, Norman? Yeah, 2019 has been a good year for Keanu. Oh man, he's breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, moving on to my turn on the list. Uh, my turn on the list is Detective Pikachu or Pokemon Detective Pikachu. So this one is one of those movies where this shouldn't have worked. This should not have worked, but somehow it did. So, what we got here is that our lead character or lead hero here is not a big fan of the Pokemons. Uh, he had aspirations to become a Pokemon champion, but somehow lost that interest and decides to be an insurance agent seller or something like that. But somehow he gets a letter from the, what you would call this, police in town saying that his father is deceased come get your stuff so with that there's a roller coaster ride of how the guy I forgot the name is trying to figure out the killer and at the same time too Pikachu can talk to this guy and hijinks in zoo besides the story plot the characters are not bad the animation of the pokemons are real to life and the way that they interact with each other is very very interesting i would love to see a behind the scene of how things were done other than that i just uh, this movie was enjoyable the plot twist at the end was interesting and yeah, if you haven't watched it, go watch. It's really fun. Uh, Tara. Yeah, go watch it. I'm in the movie. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. When when I saw that, like, I was thinking like, oh, Tara's in the movie. That's cool. Oh, he's huge. He, he put on weight. <laughs> oh, man. When that movie came out, I had people tagging me or mentioning me in YouTube cons being like, hey, Tara, I saw you in the movie. <laughs> 
But as for me, I mean, like I said, I only see it once, so I don't remember it too much exactly. But watching the movie, though, I felt like a little kid again. And at t- I'm watching it, and I'm like, wow. And I, back when I was little, I always thought, wonder how it would be like if Pokemon were living in the real world right beside us. And the Pokemon looks so real that I could almost believe that's how Pokemon will look in real life. I mean, even though some Pokemon uh, Pokedex entries are very creepy and very life-threatening at times. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen a Mantine yet, mm. but maybe they should show that in Detective Pikachu sequel. No! <laughs> but I, the only nightmarish fuel I remember is Ditto being into a human. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh. Now, that was creepy. Oh. But it was a very enjoyable movie. Oh, th- talking about scenes, did you remember the scene about the Mr. Mine? Yes. That was, that was dark humor. That was dark. Yes, that's very dirty. <laughs> Tell me you can shove it. <laughs> uh, Poor Mr. Mime, though. He tried to get away on a motorcycle only to crash. <laughs> uh, but no, man. Like, Mr. Mime, somehow, like... Man, he's, his face is creepy, but... He, to me, he's, his scene was just awesome. If you think that face is creepy, you should see how it is in the recent anime. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, but you're talking about... Uh, almost looking real, Terra. Uh, I should introduce you to this video by Click of Gripe. <laughs> oh, uh, we'll talk about that one later. <laughs> Silver, any questions about the Pokemon Detective Pikachu? I think what everyone was really like is Ryan Reynolds is Pikachu. Oh yeah, Deadpool is played Pikachu. <laughs> oh yeah, we we forgot to mention about that. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds acting here is just okay. Superb! Like he he plays the role really well. Excellent. I mean, I'm I'm still thinking of him as Deadpool. But oh yeah. I have I got the Detective Pikachu Blu-ray for my birthday. I've just not sat down and watched it yet. And Tara sent me the picture of the man, Mister Mime. Where, where, where's this from? It's from the I. Mean, it's from the. Um, I guess you could say the new series in the anime where I'm I'm assuming that Ash is now in the Gala region. Ah, with, so this is the Japanese. With the new hero then? Yes. Ah, with what? His name is Go? Was it like that? Yeah, I think his name is Go. Mm. And yeah, I'm noticing a trend with uh Japanese Pokemon anime. They're willing to push the boundary of how our characters should look like. And that's creepy. <laughs> yes. Um, ah, so... Ash is on the go. Oh god, no, no, no slash fix, please. Or Ash is with the go. Oh god. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Uh he's he's gonna change into Peter or something like that. I think you've not even heard of this new character. Uh it, it's in Japan only for now. After the Aloha region, they go to England. And now to England. Wow, the Grand Tropics to England. Yeah, after Hawaii they go to England. Although it'll probably be a pain just to search for that guy on Google because someone would be like, okay, I'm going to type in Pokemon Go. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, no, it's the game Pokemon Go and not the character Go. Oh, wow, well, yeah. But anywho, uh, Silver, what's your third? Since I talked about Avengers Endgame, why don't we have another uh, movie with both uh, Captain America and James Bond, Knives oh, Out? Oh, I heard a lot of good mm. things about that movie. It is very good. Although, at first I was confused by it because... Here's the thing. It is a classic whodunit mm-hmm. mystery, complete with a very eccentric detective that really the main heroine steals the show because she's just so li- likable. Oh, but man, I can't really talk about it without giving away some critical plot points. Jeremy Johns, in, in talking about this, he, he said, the director really knows what he's doing. You can't review the events in this without giving spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> or you can't talk about your opinion of the characters without giving spoilers. Yeah. So... That's his. You have to go see it in order to talk about it. It's like, oh, you tricked me. I know, and I've heard that 30 minutes in, somebody dies. Is it 30 minutes? Yes, from what I heard. 30 minutes in, somebody dies. Well, (laughs) Well, we would never know until we see it. It starts with a death, but okay, yeah, there's stuff to follow. Uh, But the fun twist in this is that about halfway through the movie, you think that they've told you what really happened. And it it shifts, but I'm like, there's got to be something I'm 
coming. There's got to be a twist. Show me the twist here, guys. <laughs> and, well, there is a twist, and it's a really good twist. I won't... It kind of... It almost causes me to do a, a 180 opinion on a character, or at least an aspect about a character. But again, I don't want to spoil it for Which you. Which will be interesting, because uh, I, I'm I'm getting secondhand, whatchamacallit, this info from this movie, because I heard it was really good, and I personally want to watch it, but didn't have the time. Um, I heard one scene where it was the worst uh, car chase scene ever. And they even stated out, like they got out of the car and that was the worst car chase ever. It's part of the humor. There's a great deal of humor involved in this. And so, it, and that's quite wonderful. I mean, there's also a lot of drama, some tension. Uh, although I will confess that I had a unique experience in that I really had to use the oh, bathroom no. by the end. So by the end, I'm just, it's kind of drying out for me. Like, guys, just say who done it. Say who done it. Say how. Come on. Come on. Please. I, I'm dying here. I'm going to explode. Come on. Just get the twist over with. <laughs> ah! uh, but uh, uh, actually, moments like that make me. Because I don't know if I told you about how things movie theaters are when I was in Portugal. Oh, um, no. Don't think so. The thing that, uh, when I went to Portugal, the thing that surprised me is that movie theaters in Portugal actually have an intermission. Oh, really? No. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I, I was watching so. Jurassic World, um, yeah, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and, you know, I was just watching the movie, and then all of a sudden, it just cuts, and it's obviously, you know, it's written in Portuguese, but basically the translation said intermission, and I'm like, oh, we, I didn't know that there was intermission, so you had a chance to go get more popcorn or go to the washroom, and then you have time to come back, and then the movie continues. That is a very old way of uh, theaters doing stuff because they had to change film reels back then. So that's why they have intermissions. But with modern movies, they do that too? Or it's just some... Yeah, I guess. I I guess it could be a tradition because they know that they have to put on a pause because people need to go to the bathroom, refill on popcorn or Coke and whatnot. It makes sense. But yeah. in this day and age, if you do that in what uh, over here in Malaysia or in the states, people will get pissed off. But is that all silver on Life's Out? Well, as much as I'm willing to get to tell without spoiling the movie, but it was a delight. Also, I will credit the Alamo. Before the movie, they did a short where they went through all the characters, both the actors' careers and the characters themselves, to see who's most likely to do it. Oh, cool! To, you know, be the guilty party. And the answer was everyone. <laughs> hey, but Silver, uh... like everyone was was a suspect. Uh, hey, Silver, did you have you have you seen Clue the movie Clue? Oh yes, fondly. And did you know that uh, the ending for the movie is different for quote unquote each theater, and the true ending is in the DVD slash Blu-ray. Yes, they show all three endings in the DVD Blu-ray. Where they say, oh, okay, that's how that could have happened. But here's what really happened. So I've gotten to see those various endings, and I thought that was clever, because then you can really confuse your audience. <laughs> and at the same time, too, um, the director for Knives Out is also the director for Clue. So that's something to be amazed at. Makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Silver, is it recommend to watch Knives Out? Oh, yes, very much. All righty, then. If I have the time, I'm going to go watch it. I heard a lot of good things. I heard a lot of good things. Anywho, uh, Tara, what about your third? Well, we already talked about the third on my list, which was Avengers Endgame. So um, I think I'll just hop to my fourth now. All righty, then. And the fourth movie, it, um, the fourth movie for me is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Ah, interesting. And I think Silver's seen this. Have you seen it? Ah, yes. Yes, I have seen it. Now, for this movie, I really loved it. I loved how it started from the beginning to ending. And I love how like it's not a prequel either, because I know some movies tend to do that. Like, But I don't know if it's DreamWorks movies, they do it so well. Like Even with the Kung Fu Panda series, from 1 to 3, they do it so well. Same with this, How to Train Your Dragon. I think it started in 2009 with the first one, and then it ended off in 2019. I could be wrong about when they, these movies got released. But I know that I've been watching these movies for a very long time, and I like the introduction of the new Light Fury, and I love I love how they introduced how there's this new character and why Toothless is the last of his kind because we got this guy who I'm not gonna say be- I was gonna 
You know what? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna let Sweetie Bot have the glory. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, this guy is being a meanie for killing all these dragon, all these night fears for sport. And then once he realizes that Toothless is the last of his kind, then he's like, "Oh, yay, more fun for me!" It's like, "You son of a biscuit!" <laughs> <laughs> like I said, from growing up with all these, as soon as that ending hits you, it did bring a little tear to my eye. It's like, "Oh my god, this is it, right?" And like you know, Toothless and Hiccup go their separate ways. Toothless takes the dragons away into the hidden world, while Hiccup and the rest stay on land. Mm-hmm. And I do like how um, later on he finally gets married. And I love how the couple of Vikings were like, "It's about time that these kids get married." <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I love how later on they get married, and in the future Hiccup has a beard. They have kids. They go to visit Toothless, and Toothless is like. Hmm, I don't recognize this person until he smells him, and then it's so heartwarming. But then the music, oh, the music, especially that final, that final music when they before they hit the credits, gave me chills in my spine. It made me applaud with all the people. I really loved this movie. Hmm. Uh, that's the case, Tara. Have you seen the Christmas special? Yes, I did. Yeah, the, the fun fact about the Christmas special, or interesting fact about the Christmas special, is that it's spliced in between. Uh, the end where all the dragons and the humans separate and pick up here wants to commemorate the event of how the humans and dragons live together and whatnot and somehow Toothless and Hiccup miss each other and they decided to meet up well not really the only person that knew Toothless was there was uh, who was the old guy the Blacksmith. I forgot his name. Actually, it was the daughter that noticed Toothless. One and the other, like uh, the blacksmith, noticed him too because he kind of oh Toothless there. Okay, let, let's do oh, yeah, this right. out. Did you watch this Christmas special, Silva? Uh, I missed the Christmas special. I'll need to catch up with it. I guess uh, I'll give you a link soon. Yeah, it's one thing that kind of bugs me about some movies how it's not a prequel or a sequel, but it's like an an in between quill, I guess you could say. <laughs> Because it's like, mm. oh, you know, this is fine. And, you know, they get married. Like in the movie, they show that, you know, he gets married and they fast forward it to him visiting Toothless. Mm-hmm. But then you got this holiday special. Where it's like in between when he got married and instead of fast forwarding to visiting him, it's like in between. I mean, I'll do like the continuation, but like it's just confusing because if it's like, hey, yeah, you know, they see him in the holidays, like, let's go visit him. And then we cut to the part where it's the ending of How to Train Your Dragon 3. Well, it's kind of works. They have to insert it somewhere yeah like like i said it it just depends on how they do it like uh the lion king one and a half they were just basically shoehorning in with uh tomorrow pumba being in the lion king it's like hey yeah remember the stampede from the first lion king they were there you just didn't <laughs> see them it's like really you're just forcing it now at this yep. point <laughs> uh, wait, who, uh, Silver, what do you think man well i thoroughly enjoyed uh how to train dragon I got a little disappointed when people were talking like, oh, he he finally let Toothless go. He ended the Stockholm Syndrome. What? Wow. We've got to... There was this, there's this talk by online communities about whether or not uh, Toothless and Hiccup's friendship slash family bond was unhealthy in that Toothless never had the ability to wander without, his, without Hiccup's uh, working the tail rudder. And they changed that in this movie. And so people say, oh, finally, he's letting him free. And I'm just like, wow, we're really eager to put on the worst interpretation of everything these days. Well, some people like it that way because it's dark and edgy like Batman. Er, I'm toothless. <laughs> well, I, he's, he's Black Knight. So, yeah. He's a- but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, th- this, however, d- did seem like a good ending. Okay, sure, the holiday special's an in-betweener. I don't think you can do a How to Train Your Dragon 4. Oh, no, you can't do a How to Train Your Dragon 4 after that. Although, just watch as they make an announcement <laughs> within the next few weeks. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, come on. If they do, I'll be curious and disappointed at the same time because they ended on a good note. And yeah. it's just, like, I'll be disappointed because they ended on a good note, but I'll be curious as to why they decided to do this. Money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> I mean, other reasons. Like, what? I mean, I'm curious as in what will the story be like? The only way for a movie like How to Train Your Dragon to get a fourth sequel is if they 
push it 100 years into the future where dragons exist in probably our modern time or probably in the what you call this medieval times or so on. I mean, you can push it to a point where it will be very interesting to see how do uh, what you call this uh, people of this era deal with dragons. Or you could go to Japan. I've seen too many monster movies to know how Japan would react. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, is that all, Terra? Yep, that's all. Silver, that's all? Yep. All right, I, I think I share my bit. Uh, I, I like How to Turn Your Dragon. Go watch. So anyway, for me, for my fourth movie, is Joker. So this movie had a lot of flag going on with it at the very start like people were saying that don't go watch this movie it will promote anarchy and whatnot i mean you heard about it right oh yeah and people will riot and whatnot surprisingly joker was not the movie to cause a riot it was frozen too now people just couldn't let it go <laughs> <laughs> so anywho this movie uh oh man how do i want to pro- how do i want to talk about this because Okay, um, the movie itself is a very interesting take on the, what you call this, introduction or the Joker's backstory, origin story, yes. In this movie, it shows that Joker has, or the character, um, Arthur something, I forgot, has a lot of problems, mental problems. Uh, emotional problems and let's just say that this movie promotes mental health awareness because after watching this movie a lot of correlation between how Joker reacts and how Joker is can let's just say that it's quote-unquote a relatable movie for some and the what you call this sickness or the would you call it Signal Silver? Well, no, that he he has a, a a mental condition where he he laughs if he's nervous, right? Yes, the mental tick, yeah, something like that. So that, that's more than something you can casual casually label as a sickness. Yeah, that, that's why I'm thinking. Like, how do I uh, kind of quote unquote label it? Um, disorder, condition, yeah, condition. So he has a mental condition where if he's nervous, he laughs like uncontrollably. And that exists. And the way that the movie portrays it is is similar. So this movie is... I, I have to say that this is one of those surprising movies where I thought that this movie would have, wouldn't have worked, but somehow it did. And it is awesome. Like, I don't really usually recommend movies like this, but... I'd say go watch it. It is worth a watch. Silver, you haven't watched it, right? I've not yet. I intend to. Yeah, go watch it, man. Go go watch it. It's it is worth your time. And I can already bet that your analytical brain is already working on character development or character synopsis or just characteristic of a character like what you usually do. Well, I'll let you know. I mean the trickster is always a prominent figure to talk about. All right. And Tara, have you watched this? I have not. I was thinking about seeing it, but I just never got the chance. Yeah. So, I, I highly recommend go watching it if you have the chance. And besides that, like, not going to spoil anything, but it is worth a watch. It is worth a watch. Uh, if you have the chance, go watch it. So, Silver, what is your fourth? My fourth is Us, the only horror movie I saw last year. And it is quite tense. I don't know if either of you have seen it. Is this the one with the mask? on the movie poster that they don't really worry about the mask during the movie. Hmm. But a family goes on vacation and suddenly they are beset by a, a family of doppelgangers, sort of twisted versions of themselves. And one, it's a mystery of why is this happening? But it's also an attempt to get away from this terrifying group and only to find that it's happening all over. People are being attacked by dark versions of themselves. And it is tense, it is atmospheric. All the staff do fantastic jobs playing not only their characters, but their characters' dark reflections. And so 
uh, I found it thoroughly enjoyable and uh, dark and, yes, scary. And normally I don't like tension. The best, Like I say, the biggest tension I have is needing to go to the bathroom while they're trying to reveal who done it, and they just won't do it. <laughs> Again, I don't want to give anything away because that spoils the experience. But Us was frightening and intelligent and well, well acted. And just a good time in my eyes. I mean, I don't mind being spoiled for horror movies because I don't like horror movies. <laughs> uh, but the audience may not share your, your view. I know. Everyone has a different opinions. True, true. Silver, is this movie, uh, how do I put this, mystical horror or biological horror? Mm, there is a, it's a little bit of both, actually. Really now? Huh. I mean, if you think about it, even the name is kind of horrifying. I mean, how would you feel if you, someone came up to you and be like, hey, go watch us? <laughs> have you seen us? Mm. Yeah, have you seen us? It's very good. You'll really like us. <laughs> well, now, I have seen Silver. That'll be interesting. Make- oh, yeah, I've seen him too, and he threw his two great blue balls at me. <laughs> yes, and you caught them. Yes, mm. I had you by the balls. <laughs> Red, come on. Let let's not talk about our my balls, and let's talk about us. <laughs> yes, we're hey, talking about us. Anyway. Make sure you go to the bathroom before you see us. <laughs> anyway, Tara, what about your fifth and last? My fifth and last one is Godzilla, King of the Monsters, not the original nineteen ninety. Uh, I forget the original date. Damn. Uh, I mean, you shoot. Think it, the original Godzilla is in the nineteen nineties. I'm worried for you. <laughs> no, not the 1990s. I, I, I kind of lost because there's okay. If I'm gonna point out one thing, I hate how movies remake the same title. How like we have Godzilla King of the Monsters, but now there's two, so you have to type in the the year of the movie it came out. Same with the Lion King. Now there's two, the Lion Kings, so you have to type in the original anime version and the 2019 version. Wow. Same with Aladdin. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> You're talking about Godzilla 1956 then. Yes. Well, no, I'm talking about the one that came out in 2019. Uh, okay, carry on. <laughs> I really got hyped up with this movie ever since I saw Kong Skull Island because they basically, I wouldn't say cop, okay, they're kind of copying the Marvel Universe, but except doing the whole MonsterVerse thing because at the end of Kong Skull Island, they had the end credits showing a, a little slideshow of wall carvings of Mothra, Rodan, and then... King Ghidorah versus Godzilla. And then once you hear that roar at the end, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see this movie. But at the same time, I was kind of meh about it because I saw the original Godzilla 2014 and I didn't really like that one because, I mean, yeah, the movie's called Godzilla, but I mean, okay, there's no pro- there's no problem of focusing on the humans, but I mean, I know I'm talking about the 2014, but it's just, just leave me out. So the thing that bugs me about that one is that when they're the when the action is about to get tough, like when he's about to fight, they just cut it out, and we're watching it through like something else. Like, come on, I want to see the fight. Now here, I actually enjoy it because while it does focus on the people, it does also focus on a bit more of the monsters with the whole Godzilla coming. He's basically the king, but then they're reviving all these other monsters and King Ghidorah is an alpha as well. So now we got two alphas fighting for the title of King of the Monsters. And I like that. And I like how, again, they added a couple more monsters, not just Godzilla. I mean, they did the same for the original with the Mutos, but these ones we know so well. Well, at least I do. I don't know if anyone else knows these monsters so well, but you know, I've been watching Godzilla for a long time. (laughs) I know the monsters. Oh, see, there you go. But And I like how this one ends too. It's basically another post-credit well they actually kind of do two little post-credit things so for one i mean i'll I'll, yeah i'm pretty sure everyone's seen this there's no spoiling here so the one not really post-credit but kind of an in credit scene where they show a newspaper article of kong or a mysterious monster leaving skull island and then they show another wall carving of kong versus godzilla i mean I don't know how it's going to turn out. Maybe it'll fast forward a few years because in Kong Skull Island, Kong was very small. I mean, not too small, but they said in the movie that he's still young and he's still growing. So maybe he'll be more bigger to face Godzilla in Godzilla vs. King Kong. And then the other scene, which makes me very curious on what they're going to do, maybe possibly bringing Mecha King Ghidorah because in the end credits, they show that um, I wouldn't say a corporate guy, but I guess you call him the villain. 
where he he runs into a body, or I think it's the, the head, of King Ghidorah, and I'm, I think they're implying that they're going to bring in Mecha King Ghidorah. I mean, that's just me. But, like I said, I enjoyed this movie. I loved the monsters and all the fighting, and even, I don't know why people, because I remember too, at the time the movie came out, people were complaining that there was too much fight monster fighting scenes or something like that. It was like, that's the whole point. Don't you want to see some giant monsters destroying buildings and fighting each other and crashing into buildings and at the same time? Like, again, I don't mind it, but I really enjoyed it. All right, all right. I, I personally haven't watched it, so I, I, I got no idea. But from what I can tell, what they're doing with the newer Godzilla is pretty awesome. How about you, Silver? What did you think of Godzilla? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I Again, I don't want to give away stuff for people who haven't seen too much. I didn't like the humans as much. Uh, like, one guy, he's an animal photographer, and yet he quickly becomes the only capable guy in a crisis. He knows what the animals will do. He knows how to fix machines. He knows the tactics. And I feel like, you know, there are other people in this movie. Would you like to include them as well? Nope. No, thank you. And then there's there's one character death where I actually am sad. It's like, oh, no, no, you're my favorite character in this whole thing. Really? Who? The doctor who, who uh, well... Wait, I don't want to spoil it. Remember? I mean, I already spoiled the ending in the post credits. <laughs> yeah, but then there's also uh, when Godzilla is on the down and out, and they have uh, to that's true. renew him. All right. Well, if I think I know who you're talking about, for me, I wasn't really that upset. I, when the doctor died, and I'm, I'm just like, yeah, good. Th- you know what? I don't really care. Good on you for getting killed. You're the one that started all this. Well, he didn't start all this. <laughs> it was the it was the idiot mother. <laughs> Okay, so we're thinking of a different doctor. Yeah. Oh, oh fine. I'll, I'll just I'll come out and say it since we're leaving people hanging. Shirozawa. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's like, let me die. <laughs> but we might have another sequel. Let me die. <laughs> yes, that, no, that human, one was a bit sad. The humans in this are a bit insufferable. And the girl, there's no security around this girl. Her plot shields are on full display that she can infiltrate secu- uh, places without even trying. And I'm just like, come on, guys, don't make the humans stupid just to make the monsters cool. So, eh, it, but the monster fights are fantastic, and I love seeing it. And I did a special of the headline as they're teasing in the next movie. What is a king to a god? <laughs> yeah, 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 I love that one. That, that one's great. But it's a, it's a fun one. But again, humans, it's strange that humans are sort of the defining, deciding factor in a monster movie. Yeah, like people who say that there's too much fight monster fighting in Godzilla, they they shouldn't watch it at all. Like they, they should just go home and watch their Frozen's. <laughs> but no one went to go see Frozen too. I did. Nope. I didn't. I don't think I plan on seeing it. Uh, I, I did. I don't know. To me, some movies don't really deserve a sequel. I mean, Frozen was fine, but then once I heard about Frozen 2, it's like, really? Frozen 1 was fine. Why'd you have to make a sequel out of it? And I know what you're going to say, Norman. Money. <laughs> no, not really. Um, In all honesty, with Frozen 2, it was a... Okay, here's the thing. After Frozen 2, it should end Wait, there. Wait, is, is this your fifth movie? No, 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 no. I'm just okay. saying. I'm just saying because uh, I've seen it, quote-unquote, twice. And the movie itself, like, it ended nicely. It explains a few things that happened. Uh, why Elsa got this, how that happened, how this happened, blah, 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 blah. And it put a perfect cap on the movie. If it had a sequel or a tr- third movie out, then they're just milking it. They could use... They could do what they would do with Tangled and do an animated series, but uh, that's besides the point. Anyway, um, on to me and my last movie. And, well, my last movie is Charlie's Angel 2019. This movie, hmm, how do I put this? I won't say... Uh, it's, it's rather enjoyable. It's entertaining. I love what they did with the concept of... Charlie's Angel. If you guys got no idea, Charlie Charlie's Angel, or Charlie himself, has or has an organization called 
the Townsley organization. Remember the thing, Silva? Not really. So uh, basically, uh, Charlie, the head guy of the thing, has an organization, organization like a what do you call this spy group of very talented three girls that kind of well go around solving mysteries and whatnot. Well, yeah, I remember that, but they were called the Angels. I don't remember anything else. Yeah, but uh, here's the thing. It kind of carries over that concept where one of the Bosleys kind of turned it to an organization, a worldwide organization, where agents are called angels. And it's a very ah. interesting concept. Like, the concept is very interesting. I like it a lot. The execution in the movie, let's just say that it is not your previous 2003 or 2000s Charles Angel. Like, this is something else. It's more focused on action. It's more focused on, uh, would I say relatable? Not really. It's more focused on action. And it is a really fun movie. Uh, other than that, uh, let's see. The actress in the movies are really, uh, they played the role well. Especially who now? Christine Stewart. If you guys got no idea who that is, uh, she was the one that played, um, who was the vampire chick person? Isn't it Christian Stewart? Yeah. Bella, was it? From Twilight? Yeah, Bella. Yeah. So. Well, she was the human, but then she became a vampire. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so, anywho, in that movie, in sorry, in Twilight, she was a rock. She was dumb. She was dumb. In this one, she had range. She had, she, her acting was there. Like, she knows how to act, emote. And not be a stick in the mud. So I say this this movie is awesome. <laughs> There's nothing beyond that I can say. Like it is interesting. Uh, what what else can I say? Any questions? Well, I I haven't seen the movie, so but I did. I snuck a peek at uh, a trailer before we started recording, and I saw oh Patrick Stewart is in. oh yeah Patrick Stewart is there and he plays Bosley. Still better than the poop emoji. Oh, God. <laughs> he wanted a paycheck. He had to pay for his golden throne. Well, honestly, I, I'll always remember Zombieland Double Tap for its answer. Why'd you take this role? Off the record, because drugs cost money. <laughs> that's that's what I'll usually assume any time we go to... Uh, we have it. We wonder why an actor chose X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm, true. Although, in fairness, I'm not aware of, uh, of uh, Sir Patrick Stewart being... Doing drugs. Oh, uh, he does. So I don't know. He does the green. No, sorry, Earl Grey. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Well, that's that's just British lifeblood. There. I know. <laughs> uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting movie. Uh, I say, if you have the time, if in, and if it's on Netflix or whatever it is, you should go watch. And well, Silver, what's your last? Last one is Glass, which is the culmination of. A story Shyamalan apparently envisioned with starting with Unbreakable, and then he introduced he revisited in Split, and this is the final, because the hero of Unbreakable and the and and the well, cre being from Split, the Horde, uh, they come to blows with one another and end up in a mental institution alongside Mister Glass, who has designs on both of them. Honestly, it's almost the deconstruction of superheroes as people question their mental sanity, the the viability of these these extraordinary powers. And then there's, of course, it's a M. Night Shyamalan movie, so there's a twist at the end, which is supposed to turn it all on its heel, and you're like, oh my god, I can't believe they do that. But most people are like, what? You're kidding. Unfortunately, because it actually features very little combat, I mean, okay, Bruce Willis is not exactly... Uh, fighting fit anymore he's getting older so he took part in scenes but he couldn't it couldn't be knocked out drag out um but it is 
an interesting take on these characters. The person who plays the Horde uh, with all these multiple personalities does an exceptional job, just as he did in Split. And, of course, uh, Jackson at, Samuel Jackson as uh, Mr. Glass. I mean, he's just reveling in the role. Um, he's the smartest guy in the room, and he just outdoes everyone. I know Jeremy Johns was upset by the climax and how things ended. I didn't mind as much. I, I thought, okay, this it's a dark turn, but it makes a kind of sense. All right. So, Silver, do you think Shyamalan has it? Like, he got it, he's got his mojo back? No, I think, unfortunately, I think that the uh, introduction, the way that uh, Split was received, it wasn't what, uh, he doesn't have it. I think he lost it again. So, wait, I said Split. I mean, Glass. Mm. So, it, it's interesting for a movie to have a quote-unquote trilogy with this one. Like, it's technically, uh, each movie, or well, at least the first two movies, can be viewed as independent movies to itself, except for Glass. Glass, was it? Yep. Glass depends very heavily on you having seen the original. Because all the supporting characters, well, okay, not all, but many of the supporting characters return. Is this like a horror movie or action movie, or is it both? Drama, more than anything. Okay, because okay, I know that at first glance, I was looking at it, it's like, this looks almost like a horror movie, and I'm not a fan of horror movies. I wouldn't really call it horror. It's more drama and maybe mental tension. Mm, because from what I can tell, uh, Unbreakable is a very interesting movie where uh, it's the birth of a superhero kind of thing. And it's very interesting. From what I heard that it got a lot of praise. Is it, Silva? Well... Yeah, Unbreakable got a lot of play, praise. Split, which is the introduction of a villain, got a lot of praise. But Glass, the versus movie, basically, it wasn't received as well. What? Which is unfortunate, but that's the way of it. All righty then. So, Silver, would you recommend us us go watch it? I say give it a look, especially if you've seen Unbreakable. Ah. But understand that the, it's Shyamalan, there is a twist. There is always a twist. Oh, yeah. With him, there's always a twist. Except for Avatar. Well, the twist of Avatar is not good. <laughs> the twist is the knife in your back because you realize what you just watched. Oh, yeah. So true. But anywho, with that, we have all shared our five movies. And I guess we should call it a night or day or whatever it is. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy our quote-unquote thoughts of the movies that we watch. I'm sure there's more in the future. Uh, I'll try and list them down in the com not really comments, but in the description for what we watch. Go go check it out to see what we watch. And do comment down below to, you know, share your thoughts on what you watch for the year. So anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week? Well, baby, it's time to go back to the ponies and actually we've talked about multiple personalities. We've got a body swap episode with She Talks to Angel. Oh, this is the yeah, this is the movie I like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so anywho, that will be next week's thing. So just well how do we put this? Uh yeah, stay with us next week. We're gonna talk about that one. Yay. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Nimia Show and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me under Silver Quill on Patreon and Ko-fi, where you can uh, support my video productions and comics. Of course, you can always find me on YouTube with the search of After the Fact or Silver Quill, I Shall Appear. And on Wednesdays, I post comic reviews or editorials on EquestriaDaily.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people could find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they could just do a Google search of my name, and I'm pretty sure they'll find me on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And search the radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ProtectiveLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. 
talking about thank yous i would like to thank amy lucky night myself like tristan and also jeffrey thank you so much guys you are great so anyway i have been norman sanzo i am cecilia vacril and i am torterra and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of yes show see ya adios bye bye And that's a cut. All right, wrap it up, wrap it up. We got a film to edit. And I've got to go to the bathroom. Ah! I hope it does well at the box office. It's going to be a major flop. <laughs> What's the movie going to call? The Deadly Mantines? Oh, oh, oh. oh hey, that would be, that would, well, human mantine pad. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no.